so I'm going to talk about how to uh, grow an audience using video. Um, I've got a little video for you to watch. So that gives you a little bit of an idea about what On The Tools is. Um, I'm Lee Wilcox, I'm the CEO, co-founder back in August 2014 uh, of On The Tools. Uh, like all great ideas, uh, it started with alcohol on a Friday night. Uh, myself and my best friend, Adam, who'd been in the trade for about 12 years, uh, he was moaning about the fact that he couldn't find a plaster out uh, on a job that he was on. Uh, me being a bit of a geek, Bit of a techie, uh, I was sort of adamantly argued against the fact that there's got to be something out there from a B2B perspective that would allow contractors and subcontractors just to connect. But there wasn't really anything, you've got your things like check your trade, rate your people, but it was all very much B2C, there was nothing out there that was going to allow uh, the B2B market to exist. So we carried on drinking, um, this is a little picture of Adam here, uh, he's been in the trade for 12 years, and we um, came up with this idea for an app that was going to be a very simple, upload your profile. Load a job on, you can then search for tradespeople or search for a job. Very simple. Um, so he rang me the next morning, uh, hung over on the way to work and said, You know, we're going to do this. We set about, uh, always get a, bit, a little bit embarrassed at the look of this, uh, our first logo for the app. Um, we sent the spec off via Elance uh, and spent our last bit of money that we had on a credit card to, to go get that done. So sent the, uh, sent the app over, it's been built in India and we at this point have no money whatsoever, so um, we thought, well, what, what can we do? A week later, myself and Adam were having a conversation in his garden this time, uh, and he, he said, look, why don't we just start a Facebook page? I've got loads of funny videos on my phone, I can, I can get all that and we can just reload them. He had four videos. Um, I, I then spent about two weeks, um, already full-time employed, uh, spent Two weeks scratching around trying to find content to upload to uh, social media channels. Um, and we had huge dreams of being able to get to that 100,000 mark. We thought, well, we've got a 12 month plan here, and we knew how long the app was going to take to get built. So we sat along there thinking, if we can get that 100,000 mark, we've got UK trades people all in one spot. We launched the app out, we sorted. Business for life. Um, the first video that really made it for us was, was this one. <coughs> Now, we put uh, our only bit of spend actually that we used to grow the channel, we put £40 uh, behind this post, and it got 13 million views in three days. Um, and within two weeks, we hit the 50,000 mark. And at that point, that's when 
the audience started to send us content, um, so we were then licensing that content and then reposting that back out as part of our model. Um, this was one of the first bits of content we got. Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I do. Yeah. Yeah. That position over there. That position tomorrow, yeah? Yeah, definitely. Alright, cool. That's still one of my favourite videos. Um, so, after three months, we hit 250,000 followers across the page. Um, and actually what happened was we grew this, this audience um, that we didn't really intend on building that quickly or even that big. Um, the audience looked more like this, actually. Um, so, what we needed to do was um, carry on this journey and we still had another nine months before we were going to get the app back and what we quickly started to realise was that it was hugely time consuming. We were getting around about 150 messages a day via the page, most of them being content. So I would work, I'd finish at six, come back, go through all the messages, reply to them all, watch all the content edit them if they needed editing, and then re-upload them. Oh, most of it was up till one uh, in the morning, if, if not sometimes further. Um, and Andy is always, um, our, our commercial director, is always really keen on letting me know that likes don't pay the bills, um, and it's very true. So what happened was about six months in, maybe slightly earlier than that, we had contact from quite a few of the followers to uh, asking for merchandise on the tools, hoodies or t-shirts, mugs. So we set about setting up a Shopify store. Um, it was a great business model. We uh, went out with the sort of top six trades, so uh, electricians, carpenters, plumbers, and we asked the audience to give us the best slogans, um, of which we then went through the comments, picked the ones with the most likes, and then I spent about 48 hours making some designs and getting the shop set up, and, these were just some of the sort of ones that came back, and um, within that first week, we did um, 800 pounds worth of sales. This was the my living room um, after I all the all the stock in. Uh, so I quit my job. I was like, I've done it. We've made it. Well, I've done 800 pounds worth of sales. We're done. Um, it turns out we weren't, but we did have a very good month. We did 15,000 pounds worth of sales in that first month. And it's actually what took us on that journey then to be able to come what we are today. Um, two months after we'd set the shop up, we then um, uh, took Adam off the tools to bring him on the tools again. So Adam left the trade, and there he is there in all his glory. As I said before, he's been in the trade for 12 years. We were really busy. Um, we had lots of important phone calls to do. Um, and in 2016, the app came back from India. We hit 500,000 followers uh, on the page, and um, we were set to launch, but the app didn't work. So we, uh, when we got it back, I think Apple had just launched iOS 7, um, and then the app was built on iOS 3. You know, we'd, we'd been done. Um, we took it to a UK developer. They said you've got no chance. This is, you know, this is not usable. So March that year, three months on. We lost one of our um, sort of licensing partners that we were distributing content to. Um, we uh, also had another deal we got with a sort of tax um, mileage claim service that had sort of died down. And in March, we had a loss of 24 grand. At this point, there's still just me, Adam, and the two people that we've got um, helping with the online store. Um, we were sad. We were super sad. We were Ian being sad. <laughs> Um, so, what did we do? What we what we knew we needed was someone with um, the time and experience to come in and, and work with brands. We, we become very aware that the construction industry was quite quite archaic. It was always a bit behind in terms of marketing and, uh, and the uses, and there was still a lot of money being spent on print and radio. And, and so there's a bit today, particularly from a radio perspective. But we knew we had something better, and we knew we had this UK audience. Um, so what we did was we lied to Andy um, and said that if we can get um, three months worth of, uh, of your salary in uh, our bank, then 
we come across them uh, and work for on the tools. Andy is a shareholder, we invested very early on, um, uh, and I actually worked with Andy in my previous role, so he, he, we, we got a great relationship. He stupidly said yes, um, and then we then started to work towards the fact that we needed more long-term partnerships. We've done real small bits of work with some brands, but nothing really video orientated. The industry didn't really want that at the time, uh, within construction particularly. So in September, we hit the one million mark. Um, but as Andy always says, whilst they pay the bills. So we set about then um, making a piece of content for free from one of the um, sort of biggest brands within the, the industry, which is uh, this video here. Alright, don't worry, just make sure you get everything on the list. Really out to me again. Tom Payne, skateboard ladders, and a long way. That's it, good lad. Off you go then. <laughs> It's a voted for by trades people. So we looked across what was the construction industry sort of awards at that point and realised that there was nothing really out there that, that was for the, for the actual trades people. Um, so we said, well, we'll do it, but we really want to do it so that it's a, a public vote. Um, so we now have, you know, work brand, uh, work there brand of the year or power tool brand of the year, electrician of the year, plumber of the year. This is all voted for by, by the actual trade, uh, which is, you know, really unique. So at the start of 2017, we ended up getting our three long-term brand partnerships, which was all about video, video content creation. Um, very much trying to get our audience in front of their brands in a way that wasn't going to wipe up them. And um, as we already know, consumers don't want to be sold to. Um, they want to be entertained. They want something emotive, and, and that was that was our mission. So we started to create more content like this one. Yeah. Yeah. You know what you're doing, right? just leave it out. Right. You just, and it's been enough, so I'll give you about that later. Yeah, well, all right, yeah, love you too, Mum. Yeah. You're coming in here, we're not done yet. Give us five minutes, will you? Sorry, lads, when you gotta go, you gotta go. No way, you get in here. No. Oh. and trying to talk to the trade, it was very much, uh, there was a huge gap there in terms of 
how they were marketed as if they were marketing to nuns and vicars, they're not, you know, the tradespeople. Um, our demographics sit across that we've got an 85% male following, aged between 18 to 44, you know, um, it, it's very easy to understand who they are as people, but I think a lot of brands forget that um, they're not sitting in an office and that they are on site every day. Our biggest piece of content we created was for Direct Line from a brand partnership's point of view. This piece of content was the um, highest viewed piece of branded content in the UK across Facebook. Um, and it was all surrounding Brand National. We uh, posted the video the day before the Brand National launched um, and it went crazy. And the runners and riders are ready for the on site Brand National. Let's have a look at the course here we come. Gotta go over the jump, around the brick pile, and then through over the next jump and through the finish line. Runners and riders are ready, and they're off! Oh, and the yellow hat takes it over the lead. The, the views on that piece of content, we hit about 36 million views. Um, uh, we had newspapers ringing the office asking to speak to Jones in and have an interview with him. Um, you know, the, the brand won three, um, three awards off, off the back of it. It was a, a huge piece of content for us to deliver, but completely different to what that brand and any other brand have done through the construction industry. Um, so what are we now? Well, we currently sit as a social media marketing agency. Um, the app never launched. <laughs> we had it rebuilt in the UK, and actually by the time we got that done, we realised it probably wasn't the right thing for us to be doing. The construction industry, uh, from a recruitment perspective, was, um, was, was rife. The churn had slowed down. The distance that people were travelling had slowed down. Um, it wasn't the right, um, the right thing for us to do. We currently sit third this year uh, in branded partnership content um, in terms of views and I think the reason for this, and this is what I guess the one takeaway if, if you operate social media um, publishing channels or even from your, your business perspective is the power of that niche, you know, um, there was algorithm changes at the start of the year with Facebook that meant that Facebook wanted all of us to connect more with each other, not necessarily with brands and um, I know that a lot of the bigger publishers felt that um, because they're broad following. Facebook works in a way where content will be distributed to a very small percentage of the following that you have, and then if they engage with it, it will be followed then up by being distributed a little bit further to, to the next section and then so on and so forth. We haven't seen a drop because we know the audience, we know they're based in the UK, we know that they're, they're based within construction, we then create content that's going to be relevant to them. So when that post drops with that content, the engagement we get is much higher than what other brands are getting and, and that's really helped us with, um, with the brands that we've worked with. These are the brands that we've, we've worked with so far. We're just starting to do more out set to work now. Uh, some stuff with McDonald's and Lidl and, and that's again because the audience is, is there. They're still male, uh, they're still humans. So what have we learned along the way? Lots don't pay the bills. Um, Adam was in the trade for 12 years. And if you build it, they will come. And that is a load of shit. Because it's not true. Uh, we can all operate Facebook pages, social media channels, but ultimately it has to be has to, has to come down to the uh, the content that we're creating. Um, without that content and without that relevancy, really understanding the audience um, it is a, a huge thing. And it sort of brings me on to my second point is of you know. You've got to understand the niche, you've got to understand what you do. And I think if we not had this chap who'd been in the trade for 12 years, um, we would have really struggled because I think having that 
um, understanding and, and almost whenever we're doing anything, we've, we've always tried to look at where we can add that into the office as well. We've got a few people in the social team that have been within construction as well. And, um, they're our go-to because ultimately you need to understand who it is that you're going at. And within our office now, we have trans people, which is um, you know a, a huge thing for us to be able to have. Um, third, read. Social media is changing every week. Um, the algorithm changes, the platforms change, new ones pop up, other ones disappear. Twitter's dead, then it's alive again. There's you know there's so many different things that you need to constantly keep on top of, and I think a lot of people. Um, will try and muddle along, but I think the more that you can read, um, you know, there's so many good sources out there, TechCrunch and, um, you know, just to name one, but there's, there's, there's huge amounts. Um, and I think that, realistically, without keeping on top of that, you'll struggle because the, the platforms will change before you know it, and, um, and it's very, very difficult to catch up there. Um, and that is me done. Thank you very much.